prospecting, what your spirit, remember that term, spirit, what's your spirit? Um, I, I was a card carrying Boy Scout for 11 years, I know it's hard to believe, but like last year alone, I think I had like six leads just from the Boy Scouts. Um, so talk about that, who are you just enthralled with? Who do you love? Who do you always take that call and call them back within five minutes, Glenn? And, and Kelly, you, I know you build yours, you have to build yours and you focus on first time buyers now. But um, if, if there's something that you can define yourself, so this is kind of transition. Now we've learned a little bit about who these guys are, um, but now when you look at your business today, you know, who, who do you think fondly about? Who do you say that was a great group of people? So glad I made that contact. You have a couple of key contacts that have just fed you a collection of great leads that you are very grateful for. Um, yeah, you know, I work with common you know, professionals, lawyers, and whatnot. But you know, there's this philosophy. What, uh, what the mind believes, the eyes will see, and the ears will hear. And um, I was thinking about that when Gwen said, you know, I'm, I'm looking for people that want to, you know, buy or sell within 30 days. So here's an exercise for you that that, um, that I do yearly, and I do it too. I do this twice, once for referral sources and once for, you know, specific buyers and sellers. And I go through my year and I say, okay, you know, who did I make the most, and I hate to bring it down to money, but who did I make the most money on? Right? What were my, my three largest transactions and who were my three largest referral sources? And I average those together. And so, so now I have an average of what is the largest check right, that I can get. And then I go, I, I go through them individually and say, what, what do these folks have in common? What do these buyers, sellers, referral sources have uh, alike? And I'll write them down. And uh, you know, I, see, I see exactly where it makes the most sense for me to spend time. For me, when it comes to buyers and, and sellers, it's doing two sides of the deal. It's, it's selling their house and then them buying another one. It's a move up, move down, buy. I'm evidently not profitable doing first time home buyers because I get frustrated. Uh, but, but the numbers are staggering. I mean, and because though when they buy, then they're buying inside of, I mean, you're out for a weekend once their house is under contract. Uh, so and then so right. how do I how do I pay my average, you know, my, my largest check average from 2011 and make it bigger in 2012, bigger in 2013. And it's really a function of working with more people that are like. So those people for me, you know, if you want to know is uh, you know they they have good jobs, they have equity, and they listen. I mean that's that's it. And if I tell them that they need to change those countertops, they say okay. It's not a whole, you know, four week analysis of, of income. So that's, does that kind of, <laughs> that's my checklist. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of how I, how I operate on, on an annual basis. So, you know, sphere of influence, you know, what I train is it's very simple. There's three things if we're going to do business. You've got to like me, trust me, and refer me. And I always say to people, a lot of you have heard it because you're students of mine. And I say, how do you know that someone likes you? Oh. Right? Like, how do you know? And you're all thinking, right? Wow, maybe my clients don't like me. <laughs> right? So they're like, well, they talk to you. They give you information. They write offers with me. I'm like, OK. The answer to that question is you like them. So the point is, I don't do business with people I don't like, because they don't like me either, right? Right. And it's like, real estate agents are crazy. They actually think, I hear real estate agents like bitch and complain about their clients, and I'm like, they don't like you either. I mean, really, the way you feel about somebody is the way they feel about you. So if you understand that concept, this business can be really, really fun if you only work with people you like. And if you stop, but if you're broke and you're new, you have to work with everybody. Right? <laughs> and you're like, okay, I'm going to figure out how to like them. I'm going to make them like me. Well, some people just are not likable. So to answer your question, I figured out really quick, I only want to work with people that I like. My biggest source, I was a football coach for 25 years. I still continue to be involved in high school football. And, um, you know, there's nothing like community involvement. Uh, everybody really needs to be a part of something bigger than themselves, so I would encourage you all 
to, if you, I'm sure you all have it actually, but you know, there's nothing like being around people with a goal that's bigger than you. And um, that's been the greatest source of business. It was Bishop Chicago football. And I mean, wow, it's like, I don't know, 20 deals a year probably come from that. So to answer your question, it was coaching football for 25 years. Um, I think just staying in contact with my uh, past buyers and sellers, um, I've gotten a lot of great leads from investors who have come into even open houses, um, just staying in contact with them and um, continuing to, to build on um, my sphere of influence um, and, and with the repeat business and the um, um, referrals and, and first time home buyers. I mean, I think that's really where I found my niche. I'm sorry to keep going back to that, but it's just really been a great business for me and it's really kept me out there and, and busy. Yeah. 